to the Environment, Forestry, and Trails Committee meeting on Wednesday, May 18th, uh, 2022. And we're calling this meeting to order at 9.05 a.m. Um, the first um, item on your agenda is nominations for the committee chair. I have to resign from the position of chair because I am now a full-time staff member. Um, so we would like to appoint a new chair of the Environment, Forestry, and Trails Committee. Um, so does anyone have any um, appointments? I have the red. I move Murray be chair. The only thing against that bird is they're coming up to an election and I could be outside looking in. So therefore, I might not be on this committee. So I really think it should be someone that maybe has a little more knowledge than what I do. I will help any way I can while I'm on, but I think you good folks have the knowledge of what is going on in the committee. Actually, uh, actually, uh, I'm not being turned off. Well, it's true. This stupid thing doesn't work half the time. I have to hold my finger on it. So anyway, uh, yeah, I'm, if you can't get a seconder. I second that nomination. I think uh, re excuse me. I think Patty Kale would be very good at it. I decline. Thank you, though. <laughs> I would rather you, uh, since Murray has two last names, I'm kind of confused with Councillor Rose. So <laughs> I, I thought we were electing a girl. But anyway, uh, if, if you wouldn't mind calling them Murray, I would be much happier. Well, uh, we will move on to the confirmation of the agenda. If I could have a mover and seconder, please. Yes, I'm sorry, Patty. Yes.
<laughs> Take a little bit of time to get that ready. Um, can we add, I'm not sure where, into the wetlands, I guess, um, adding stairs to the, to the one end of the wetlands? Another uh, point is that the Purple Martin House update by Patty Kale and Rita Herbert. I'm not part of the Purple Martin House. I believe it's <laughs> I believe it's June Ann. Is that correct? It's Anne. Yeah. Okay, so do we have a, um, for the acceptance of the agenda, do we have a first and second? Bert first, Patty second. All in favor? Carried. Is there anybody with a pecuniary interest for the rest of the meeting? Anybody that conflicts with, um, usually I guess it's money in the end, isn't it? Okay, seeing none, uh, confirmation of the adoption of the minutes, first and second. And a seconder, Bert. All in favor? Carried. <clears throat> okay, meeting of February 16th. Environment, Forestry and Trails Committee. And we've gone through all that, okay then. So I guess we will go to the reports. Memorial Forest, and I guess Darcy, that's you, sir. Yes, thank you, Murray. Um, don't have a lot to update on that. We are working on a uh, getting mulch out there for all the trees. Um, Lobita's actually looked after a lot of that. Um, staff will be out there trimming shortly um, and we will try to keep it trimmed throughout the year, but the mulch will also give us some assistance. So that's really all I have to update on the Memorial Forest. Thank you, Darcy. <clears throat> Which uh, is that the forestry down by World Creek or the one up at the old dump? That's uh, the one up by the old dump, I believe, not the one down on uh, Highway 8. That's the demonstration for us. Okay. Any other questions for uh, the memorial for us then? We're okay. Moving on then, we'll go to uh, Wetlands and the Purple Martin House. Uh, we got the Purple Martin House up, Bert put it up, I don't know, in April sometime, and uh, we've been watching, there was a Purple Martin was there, or compassed, but now it's been taken over by a Tree Swallow, one place, and I've called down to, uh, to uh, Windsor to see if the Purple Martins are still coming through, if they will go in when a Tree Swallow was there, so at least it's got somebody in there and it's not a sparrow. So I, I, we just have to keep checking it and see what, uh, what happens. They keep saying they will come. So that's all we can hope for. So uh, I, that's, I think all there is, we just check it on a regular basis. <clears throat> I've been back a couple of times, back to the Purple Martin House. Uh, the one purple Martin, I think he's black, but he's sitting on top of the thing yet. And uh, I think they're drawing a few uh, people. There's quite a few people stop and look at it, but I've been back about four or five times uh, 
I can drive back with the mule, so it's not uh, near as uh, stressful for me as it is for some people. They all wonder why I can drive back with the mule. I say, all you have to do is look after it, and then you can drive back to uh, it. So nobody's decided to look after it yet. So actually, it works pretty good. And uh, I'm just kind of wondering, why, uh, why do we have to take it down every fall? It's not a big deal. I can take it down. That's no problem. But uh, why do we have to take it down every fall? The only uh, the only thing I can think of is high winds hurt. Uh, with that, with the pole, it, it might blow over. Um, not sure, but that's the only reason I'm, I'm thinking. And if you just bring it down, then there's a chance for vandalism, right? So I'll take it down. Do you have to clean it out every year? Um, it should be, you know, it should be checked to make sure that there isn't any anything in there. Um, I clean my boxes out every year, so yes, it should be checked. Um, and Bert, when you're taking it down, if you want to let me know, I will certainly, you know, come over and, and clean it out, no problem. Um, but they should be checked. The other thing is um, tree swallows, um, sometimes, unfortunately, they're, <laughs> they're, removed from a box that they might be looking at at nesting. Uh, for example, house wrens will take over a swallow box. And I'm thinking that's likely what's happened here. Maybe they've been uh, turfed out by a house wren or a few house wrens and, or even sparrows. And that's why they're congregating around the, uh, around the Purple Martin house. But I've been told um, sometimes it takes a couple of years for uh, a new house to be accepted by uh, birds like purple martins. I know there's one up in Bayfield. Anne was just saying uh, they put a new one up there last year. When I was out there last year, I haven't been up there yet this year, um, they, didn't, uh, they didn't take to it very well. Um, they were still in the, uh, using the old, uh, uh, old one that they left up. And apparently this year, they're still not accepting the new one. Um, sometimes it takes a while, so. Sounds like it could be a little bit like us. We don't like change. <laughs> okay, then. Thank you very much, everyone, for all that information. I'm learning as I'm going here. I guess next we'll go to trails. Oh, I'm... Boy, that's what happens when you hire a newbie. Uh, also with the wetlands, now we'll go to the stairs. Um, yes, last, uh, last summer or last spring sometime, uh, Rita and I had proposed putting a set of stairs. I don't know if you know where the wetlands, you know where you go down at the far end, uh, down by the, where the rubber thing, down towards the bush, wherever. It's a big steep hill and the birders, they, a lot of the birders, they walk along there and then come up and or go down from the wetlands. And I was talking to one um, last week out there and he said, he said, I had to crawl up that, he said, crawl up that thing and he had a big long camera but he said it's so steep for he said for the age of me he said it's, it's he said maybe younger people can and then I had a bunch of uh, birders back at the bush at my place and my brother has put in a pair a set of stairs like Rita had sent some pictures in and uh, they said this is what we need at the wetlands um, to go up and down safely because I, 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 do, I don't even go down there because i I know I'd be toppling down. I, I, I couldn't be able to do it. And Rita, I think, has some pictures for the stairs that my brother put in. 
he put them in and they're almost probably the very same length and uh, I would say as what was needed there. And he had some Mennonites back at some place back here that helped set the metal stuff up. And then he put it together using ash that come out of the bush. And he said it cost about $1,500. Now I know that'd be different when you're dealing with municipality because you'd have to have approval and you know on and on. But, but I, I don't know, I think it would be a good, certainly a safe thing for, because there's a lot of birders go out there, let me tell you, and especially at this time of the year, they're, uh, um, and they spend a lot of money here too, going to lunch and stuff at the morning. So. <laughs> So Junan, that is a great idea to have stairs. It would make it a much more accessible area for people who are using the trail. Um, and it would also help connect into that forest trail from off the wetlands. So for sure, a great idea. Um, we are at the end of this meeting, um, we are gonna be talking about the process for submitting budget proposals for new items for 2023. So how we'll kind of discuss that more in that section, but um, we'll, be wanting to have proposals submitted for September. So if this is something that you would like to champion, it's, it sounds like you have a few connections with information, um, with a strategic budget, um, a time frame, the size roughly, how many stairs, um, then we can vote on that in the September meeting. And uh, we'll be able to vote on that more clearly if we have a, like a, a a budget and a, a project plan. Um, so I definitely think it's a great idea. I think it's something that we could and should move forward with, especially if it's only gonna be a couple thousand dollars that we can squeeze in the budget. Um, but we would just wanna make sure we have it sourced out. Will the municipality need to tender it or maintain it? Will that be the committee's responsibility? So there's just a few nuances we'd wanna sort out before undertaking a project like that. But I definitely think it's something that is a worthwhile endeavor. So, so should, sorry, should, I, I understand all that, but how, I know there has to be when it's, it's different when it's at my brother's place, he just went and built it. But here, I think there's like probably all kinds of steps to go. And I don't, I, I don't know what that is. So do we just, are we just gonna be asked to figure out the cost of it? And then somebody else, I'll, I'll let some, Sorry, I, I can uh, jump in on that. I can definitely assist with as far as what um, approvals we need and what it's gonna have to look like. I can talk to the building committee as well as the accessibility committee um, through the county and get those answers for you. I can definitely assist with that. Would, would sorry, would you come out to see the one that we've got or that I'm talking about so we could show you what it is? Yes, absolutely. If uh, you guys want to email me or something, we'll set up a date and I can definitely come out and look at it. That's no problem. Do you have to have engineered drawings for the that? Darcy? I did. Uh, that's what I would have to find out. I'm worried about that, but I will find, I will get that answer for us. I don't have it off the top of my head, but I'll get that answer for us. Bert. Back when I was chairman of this committee, we put a staircase in and it's in right at the Frank Street Bridge. And we did not get an engineer's report to put that in, but I know who put it in and it was damn expensive. And there was about uh, six or eight steps. Pat Kelly put it in and he done a heck of a good job. And he used old railroad ties, ones that were still good. And uh, actually, he only charged for his labor. And it took a fair bit of labor to put that in. So, and he used the high hole because he had to dig that out and then put, and then put the railroad ties in. So uh, it actually worked pretty good. He cut the railroad ties in half and used one railroad tie for two steps. Now, that area that you're talking about is but they're all soil, so it might be a little different to, to put them implanted in the ground. The other one is coming off of St. George Street, 
down by uh, where uh, one of the residents used to live, there's a railroad tie step down there, down to the Thames River. Look at that before you start uh, getting engineer reports and everything and going all over the world trying to get a price to put something in that uh, works actually really good. And I'm sure Pat Kelly would do that too. Thank you. That was a lot of great information from everybody. That's um. And I, I know, Anne, what you mean. I've driven by there and uh, I was kind of looking at it. Actually, I walked the one day and I really did notice that. And you're right, that is quite steep there. And I could see how that could be a hazard. I don't know, going down and coming up. So <laughs> I think it's a great idea. And if you folks are willing to do this and, and Darcy and we'll collaborate and see what we come up with. Thanks everybody for your great information. Yes, Rita. Just one comment. Um, when you're birding at the wetlands, um, you generally go from the actual wetlands and then you go down into the, the woodlot area. Um, that's the way we normally bird, or you might be birding down in the woodland, woodland area and then come up to the wetland area. So it, it would be nice. I mean, it all depends on the cost. It, it, it would be nice to have stairs that come directly up from the woodlot area up into the wetlands, if you, if you know what I mean, Bert. Um, I know there are other areas that you can go down. I've used them. Um, but when you're at the wetlands, it's just, it just be much more um, easier for, for anyone birding to just go down into the woodlot area, especially this time of year when you've got warblers coming in. Um, there'll be warblers coming in to the woodlot area and there are, uh, uh, you know, um, a waterfall up in the wetland area. Just a comment. Thank you, Rita. Is there anyone else or any more comments or information for the wetlands um, that we're on right now? Seeing none, I guess we will move to the next, which is trails. I can probably start that one. I know why. I think probably, Bert, do you want to have any comment on trails to start and then? Well, being a volunteer, I like to work on information that I get from other people. And uh, not one person has called me in the past year about the trails. Uh, so I haven't really done anything about the trails. So they're still there where they were last year. Uh, I'm a little disappointed in you, Darcy, because Last year, we met at the end of Wellington Street to do the um, that field down there. And uh, I haven't heard a word from you since. It was Evelyn that called me to, to work this uh, land up. So uh, I, uh, I, expect, uh, I expect information from the public to, uh, to work on the trails. I keep hearing that you're the one that's involved with the trails and I never hear from you. So uh, I'm waiting. I'm still patiently waiting. Uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, thanks, Bert. And yes, I will, uh, I will touch base with Bert and we will uh, get a plan for trail maintenance as well as with my staff. So um, I can definitely set that up and I apologize, Bert. Patty? A few questions, Darcy. <clears throat> the the items, the signs in the benches that were graffiti, where are we with that? Oh. Yes, yeah, so um, I did get my first quote back to clean up those signs and benches and the there's a bridge that's graffitied. There's a, there's a bunch of spots, a lot of the pictures that you took, plus a couple more that I've got sent in. Um, the quote was around $8,000. Um, I am waiting on another quote. Unfortunately, I couldn't get a hold of the guy all winter. He finally called me back. He's well known. He works with Middlesex Center um, on the graffiti removal because they have the same issue. Um, I actually just, he called me on Sunday afternoon, um, finally. And so I've sent him stuff and I should hear a quote back from him. I think it'll be a lot more accessible to us. And um, I think that we'll try to move ahead as quick as possible on those. 
Is there a is there a product that the um, municipal workers could use and do it that way? I've I've even I don't know how well it works, but I've seen a product at uh, Canadian Tire that removes graffiti. Would could we access the product and and get the work done it ourselves? I can certainly try that. I did go out to Swarfa, which is Southwestern Ontario Recreation Facility Association members, which is everybody, all the rec. No one's found a great solution. I did have one solution sent to me. Um, it wasn't from Canadian Tire, it was from a, a cleaning company. Um, we were gonna order one of those, but unfortunately, again, they're low on stock and waiting for um, stock to come back in. Um, but we can definitely try those. I just uh, was hoping that this goodbye graffiti would give us a, a pretty good quote and we could have them do it in the day rather than us try to do it in separate times. And I'm just worried about some of the plaques that we don't ruin the plaques in trying to get the graffiti off. So. Um, <clears throat> in the Lions Park, the trail there along the river is quite muddy in spots. Uh, I think it needs some a layer of a new layer of stone dust. Can that be looked after? And also, um, I believe they were looking at a new design for benches and replacing some. Has that has have they found a um, style that they want to incorporate? Yes, we have actually, and uh, we have ordered ten new benches, um, but we ordered them in. March or late February, early March, I believe. And the arrival date is September, but they're coming from home hardware. Um, he's got his connection and unfortunately that's just the time frame it is. So they'll be in early September. Thank you. Is there any more questions or concerns or comments about uh, the trails at this time? Okay, moving on, we'll go to forestry. Yes, thank you, Murray. Um, so the letter that we sent to Earth Corporation was included in the agenda package. This was a letter to them expressing our gratitude for the funds that they provided our committee for the Healthy Forest Grant for 2021 and 2022. Um, they provided us with $5,000 uh, for the landowner incentive program to plant trees in West Perth. Um, so with this money, we were able to work with Upper Thames River CA and Osable Bayfield CA to plant 4,809 trees. These trees were purchased by 18 landowners within West Perth, and they were purchased last fall through Osable Bayfield and this spring through Osable Bayfield and Upper Thames. So we want to show our gratitude to Ian Jean and um, Paul at Upper Thames for their partnership. Um, these trees that were planted ranged from like small seedlings, about 10 centimeters to 20 centimeters tall, all the way up to six foot bare root trees and potted and, ball and burlap trees. Um, so they're not just the little tiny ones, they're also the larger ones. Um, so these trees will sequester 104,703 kilograms of carbon dioxide per year. And this is an amazing um, step forward for West Perth's um, climate change activism, I suppose. Um, so because I'm no longer going to be on the committee because of my um, employment status, um, I will no longer be championing this program. So if we wanna continue with a tree planting program, which I highly recommend because there were wait lists uh, to, for landowners to participate in this program, um, we may need somebody else to champion it. We have also had a lot of people coming into the municipal office asking for one or two trees or do you guys sell trees? Can I, can I buy some trees from you? And we have to point them in the directions of the CAs or to local nurseries because we don't, sell trees from the municipality right now. Um, so um, although the Healthy Forest Grant, um, the status of that is pending, um, there's definitely an appetite within the community and within West Perth to continue it. 
Um, so that could be a conversation after this meeting or moving forward if someone wants to take that on. Um, but otherwise, I'm really happy with the success of the program. And it's amazing to see so many landowners step up and want to plant trees. So uh, that is my update. And I open it for questions. Bert? I think tree planting is great. And I, I, uh, I forget the numbers you mentioned about uh, uh, carbon monoxide deleted in that. My question then is, you planted so many thousand trees, how many of those trees are still living? Because after a tree dies, it does no more benefit to the uh, environment. And uh, I, I think it's a great project and I think it needs to be kept up. But uh, we all, always forget, like there's some people that have said they planted 10,000 trees and over half of them are dead. Uh, so uh, they actually only have 5,000 trees. So anyway, that's what I'm trying to say. The, you plant a lot of trees. I think personally, I plant two or three trees every year and make sure they stay alive rather than plant 10,000 and let half of them die. That's a great comment, Bert. I definitely have real life experience with that. Um, obviously we hope that all 4,809 trees survive, but in reality, that may not be the case. However, the CAs do an amazing job for landowners who are picking up trees for the first time. They provide them education on how to properly plant a tree to give it its best chance of survival, as well as um, follow-up maintenance and care. So um, this is why it's so important to continue running a program like this in West Perth, it is to assist landowners who may have had uh, a rough mortality year because of a dry spring or whatever um, to acquire trees the next year and the next year. I feel like this program has only been running for two years. We've just started to get um, awareness in the community of this grant, people asking for the grant with CAs, people coming after the, the order dates have closed with the CAs asking for the grant. So to terminate the grant at this point in time, I think would be um, really to our detriment with all the, the groundwork that we've laid. So um, continuing this grant, I think is important for this committee and it should be a pillar. Patty. When I was in the park for the cleanup day, the lions were asking me, they have a, a slope that starts to erode and they were asking me where they could get small trees or native shrubs to plant on that slope. Do you have any suggestions for them? Yes, I would definitely point them in the direction of the Conservation Authority, depending on which watershed they're in. Um, the Conservation Authority provides trees at a very reasonable cost, better than you can get at most nurseries. They're all native species. They come from reputable within Ontario local um, nursery stock. And a lot of times the seeds from those nurseries are from local trees. So um, I definitely recommend supporting our CA's tree planting programs and recommending that to others. Bert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. About 10 years ago, I bought some trees from Maitland Valley. That's a little bit out of our district, but I I happened to know the kid that uh, worked up there and uh, he said, no, you can buy, buy trees up there. So I bought, uh, I think two dozen trees from them. And ever since then, they always send me an application every spring to buy trees and fall. So Maitland Valley is a good place to buy trees. Excellent place. Thanks, Bert. Is there anyone else with any comments or, or information for us? Once again, I'm learning a lot in a quick time here. Good stuff to know. Thank you. Kinda. Okay, now we will move on to environment. Upper Thames cleanup. Patty, take it away. So we had about 70 volunteers out at, between Mitchell and Dublin. Am I on? Working? 
Okay. So there were about 70 volunteers out between Mitchell and Dublin. Linda Feeney organized Dublin. Um, Darcy made sure we had a dumpster in the park to put everything in that we collected. Um, everybody was sent out and we, had, we have it mapped out so that it, every, every area is covered along the riverbanks and trails and also the parks. So we have people set, up, set the bags of garbage up at bridges or at the end of a road. And when that's all done, Jerry and I take our trailer and we go around and we pick it all up and put it in the dumpster. Um, Alliance member, I think it was Bob Tanho, offered to go and pick up the, everything that Dublin collected and brought it back. And we followed it by a barbecue, which Bert Sr. and Bert Jr. did the cooking. Everyone enjoyed that. And I think that's everything, if anyone has any questions. Oh, yeah. I know it's an excellent, uh... Um, day in in the park but a couple of things have happened and uh, I, I know it's hard but a couple of years ago I think five or six years ago Nellie Eckert and uh, Mrs. Megan's they always used to and they live about three miles past our place uh, south and they always used to pick up garbage on the way to town they used to walk into town walk down Frank Street and they would call me and say there's three bags of garbage laying at that tree or five bags I just wonder if somehow or other we couldn't include more of the rural municipalities because there's always a lot of garbage on Frank Street starting at our place or Frank Street uh, starting at the East End. You know where that is, Frank Street? Yeah, and there's always seems to be a lot of garbage there for some reason or other. I think it's a, a route out of town. And I know it's hard to get people to go out of town and uh, but I think, I think we need to have a little bit more openness at our landfill site. Like if, if I go down there and pick up garbage for those ladies that have picked up garbage and I go to the tree and I take it to the landfill site, I, I demand that it's free. I don't sit there and say, yeah, this is uh, garbage. Other people come from the street, street and, uh, and, and they let me in uh, because, uh, I, I'm not going to pick up other people's garbage. And another time, there were some people threw out bags of garbage. And I put on some gloves, and I dug through that, and I found the guy who put them there. And I said, either go and pick that garbage. I phoned him. I said, you pick the garbage up, or I'll call the police. And uh, he, had it, he had it picked up shortly after that. So somewhere along the line, we're not, uh, it's a good project. And I know, I know somebody said to me once, we should have that every week. Uh, and I said, yeah, and then we could get rid of picking up garbage because we would do it all for nothing. <laughs> so anyway, that's uh, interesting, but we need to get a bigger area uh, of bringing it in. And it doesn't necessarily have to be that day. It can be a couple of days before when people start gathering up garbage uh, on the, along the roadsides. And you know, you know what they do along the highways? They pick up the garbage and set it on the on the side of the road, and people pick it up. So anyway, that's my two cents. Thank you. I thought... Okay, um, I do know that Rand, Randy Finlayson, who lives on the river, has a kayak, and ourselves collect fish garbage out of the river every time we go out and bring a load back. And another person that does it all the time is Bill Dungey. He is always going around picking up garbage. And the Frank Street Road out to your road was done that day. I don't know if it's you know been littered since then, but uh, it it was it was in the list of areas to go. So. I have a few things to add to this. Um, 
The West Perth Youth Centre is now running some environmental programming, uh, one of which I think it was this week or last week, was a community cleanup to try and get the youth involved in cleaning up the community in our parks and at the wetlands. Um, so our youth centre leader is going to be doing more programming like that throughout the year, hopefully. And if there is a need for it, then I think that that's a, a positive thing to get our youth involved in, in environmental stewardship. The other thing is uh, with Westport's social media and website, we have been running an anti-littering campaign and a waste reduction awareness campaign. So we're hoping to increase the education of our residents about the importance of properly managing your garbage, um, reducing the contamination rates of our recycling and keeping the um, rates of our landfill um, low, like things coming in, diversion rates. Um, so thank you, Patty, for running that cleanup. I have a question. Uh, do you report the weight of the garbage or the items of the garbage to the Great Canadian Shoreline cleanup? No, I don't. How would I report the weight? <laughs> Great, thank you for the question. Um, so I used to run shoreline cleanups on Lake Huron and we would report the garbage collected to the Great Canadian Shoreline Cleanup, which is um, an organization Canada wide that tracks uh, waste cleaned up off of beaches and parks, trails, rivers, you name it. So what they do is they try and separate the waste um, into like microplastics and large garbage. They weigh all the garbage at cleanups and then they report it into the reporting categories on the website. So you can see nationwide how much um, cleanups are contributing to the anti-littering in, in Canada. It's a really worthwhile website to check out. It's called the Great Canadian Shoreline Cleanup. And I recommend if we're doing more cleanups in the future to report to this site. Um, and it's a great way also to raise awareness for people who are in different areas, especially rural areas that want to participate in cleanups. They might subscribe to their emails and see, oh, there's a cleanup coming up in our area. Let's, let's attend. Um, so it's not only a great way to contribute to a national database, but also encourage more people to come up and be aware of cleanups happening in their area. I can send them a photo of the dumpster full of garbage, but I think that's very labor intensive to have to weigh garbage. Or like, how am I going to do that? That's a great question. So uh, with the organization I used to work for, we had fish scales and we would weigh each bag. It was not that labor intensive and it was actually really great to have that number at the end of the cleanup saying, we picked up 400 pounds of garbage. Can you believe that? Or say, we picked up 4,000 cigarette butts. Holy crap. Having those numbers is really important. There's a phrase that I love to use all the time and that's what gets measured gets managed. So we can say, Oh, year after year, after 10 years, we used to pick up a thousand pounds of garbage at this cleanup every year. And now we only pick up 300. That must be evidence that people are littering less. Um, so getting these kind of quantitative numbers, in my opinion, is really important, not only for science, but also for tracking. And it's, it's a fun activity for the kids too, if they're out and they see people weighing the garbage, they're like, oh, what's going on? Oh, can I weigh one? Like it's, it's engaging. So yes, like it's it's great to see a photo of a dumpster full of garbage, but then it's also great to say, oh yeah, and it was also 1,200 pounds, holy cow. What do, you, what do you do about like, we get steel beams, we get tires and, and some of it, it's just disgustingly wet and grimy and like, I don't understand how you can weigh all that. If it's in bags, certainly you can weigh a bag, but there's so much that's just loose. Actually, this goes back to Darcy, who brings the container into the Lions Park. And, you know, he who brings it in should actually take it out. There's a scale at our landfill site. And I'm pretty sure when I take a truckload in, I have to go over the scales and weigh it, and I pay per pound. If you take that load that you, they bring in there, whether there's beams or not, you just go over the scale and weigh it, and then you get on top of it and you sort of estimate well, there's 30 bags of garbage, there's two steel beams, there's a thousand cigarette butts, it's sort of an estimation of what you're, what's in there. And then you have a total of the whole thing. And, and that way, it's not all that hard to weigh and you can estimate the, the product that's in there. So 
that's why we put a scale up there so we can charge the people although your load should be free uh it uh, it should still be there uh, and get it way in approximately how many tons or pounds of weight you have in there thank you i think that's a great idea rita thank you mr chair um I pick up garbage along our farms every year. Um, Joshua is now taking over doing that. Um, and uh, I have to say that uh, um, I don't I, I don't want to sound negative, but um, there's still a lot of litter out there for some reason. Um, but what I what I want to maybe suggest, um, I think, to make people aware um, is using the local newspaper. Um, your hard work, I think, should be recognized by the community. And, and I wonder if maybe on Earth Day or when you're doing the cleanup, Patty, that you have the media come out and, and take a photo of all the garbage that you've collected. Address that. Um, Andy's very short staffed. In the past, he's always, he's always done a story the week before our ad. He'd do the story one week, then our ad would be in. He has no staff now. So he asked me to report to him, give him a report and photos. <laughs> I had to take the photos as well. He wasn't well that day and didn't come out. So we used to do that. And Andy used to come out, but it, that's all changed with the advocate now. So. Rita, I think that's a really great idea. I, I don't think that it's too much work if you would to assign a volunteer on the committee or whatever to come out to the cleanup and take photos and write up a little report and submit it to Andy as a follow up to the cleanup. So not only advertising it's happening, but also sharing the results. And that could be with the weight of the garbage picked up um, to increase the awareness campaign. And um, that just might be asking another member of the committee to come out and do that at the cleanup, which I don't think is a big ask. I'd gladly volunteer if you if you want me to help out, Patty. I I gladly volunteer because I think I think it's important that um, you know there 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 are a certain number of people that are aware of cleanup day, um, but but there are a lot of people that don't know about it, and I think the more people you make aware, hopefully it'll catch on. I. I, I just find there's so much, even uh, with our maps now, if you, if you walk through some of the parks, not necessarily here because uh, the municipality does a wonderful job at keeping our, our uh, wetlands and our trails clean. But I know I've been in London on the London trails um, uh, out at uh, Westminster Ponds and there are masks all over the place hanging from trees. So I think the, 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 it's important to make um, you know the general public aware of of the need to keep things clean um especially for wildlife any more comments or concerns you want to bring up again a lot of good information and i will agree with a lot of people growing up in the country in rural areas um it was we were taught at school and definitely at home you did not throw anything out of the car windows. You, you know, you kept it in and you took it to the house and put it where it was supposed to go. Um, I don't know if it's a sign of the times. You, you don't want to come across negative, but we see a lot uh, going up and down the roads, which I like to travel kind of down memory lane and seeing who used to be where, whatever's going on. And uh, there is a lot of litter more so I think than what there was maybe 20 or 30 years ago. And it's just something we got to get on top of and um, educate. And I guess we got a couple more generations coming up and we'll have to, it's our job to educate them like our parents and grandparents educated us. So if through maybe social media or whatever, or word of mouth, we will try to make everybody aware and hopefully. But I agree with Rita, those masks, walking up the streets if you go to any of the out of mitchell they're all over the place well, yeah what a 
heck of a mess. Patty. For the rural areas, on I believe on our poster, it, like rural, rural residents are supposed to clean up along their side roads and along their properties. And um, the, the refuse that day is free at the landfill. They don't have to pay anything to take it in. So that's, <clears throat> that's how we deal with the rural areas. <clears throat> Excuse me, because we, you know, we don't have enough volunteers to send people down at all the side roads. Okay, I guess then uh, we will move on to Pollinator Meadow. Yes. So Evelyn couldn't be here today. Uh, she started a new position, so she is unavailable uh, during the day, but she sent me a little synopsis to share with you at this committee meeting. It says, last year's half of the pollinator garden is beginning to grow back and we are already starting to see some flowering happen. The new side of the meadow is currently almost prepared. Bert, thank you Bert, has gone through a couple times to break up the soil and it should be ready by the end of the week or by next week for seed. We may need to purchase some sand for spreading seed if there's money left in the budget. Once the meadow is growing on both sides, we will be able to mow a path to walk through. If we are still interested in signage, we can coordinate something later in the growing season to match the other signs at the wetlands. Other than that, we are making great progress. Thank you to Bert. Bert? Well, actually, I think I worked it about 300 times on five different occasions because I went and bored my neighbor's disc and I dished it and dished it. And there's so much grass down there that I had a heck of a time to get rid of. So I left it for a week and then dried up a little bit. And I went back in with the disc again. I bored from my neighbor and uh, I worked it again. Then I went in with the cultivator about five days later and I worked it up with the cultivator. And then a couple of days later, I went back in again. I worked it up with the cultivator again and ended up with a flat tire. So I went home and I got the tire fixed. And uh, I, for some reason or other, I had to hook up to the cultivator because I couldn't get the wheel on with the, the axle the way it was. So I had to hook up the cultivator and move the axle down so I could get the tire in and move it up again and hook it up. So I said yesterday, I have the cultivator hooked up anyway, so I'll go up and rip it up again. And uh, I'm a volunteer and I work for nothing. But as I said, was it to you that I said, diesel fuel is now over 10 bucks a gallon, 250 a liter. If somebody would like to make a small cash donation to the cause, I would be more than happy. But if you don't want to do that, I am not gonna turn in a bill if you think that. So. Uh, saying that it is actually working worked up pretty good and uh, i'm i wasn't sure of whether evelyn was going to ask me to roll it after she planted it or not so i have the roller at home and i'm prepared to go and roll it now when i roll it the gas isn't quite as cheap uh, isn't quite as expensive as diesel fuel so i use the mule to to roll it and uh, I can roll it if you want, only if you want, if you don't want it, just say so and I won't go up and roll it. So let me know when you plant it and uh, we'll leave it at that. And I hope I hope that's the last, uh, I forget, I always forget what you call the darn thing, pollinator garden. I hope that's the last pollinator garden that we do because that area, like, I don't have a plow anymore. Mother Nature doesn't warrant plowing anymore. So it would cost more if you plowed it too. So I would, that's it. I, I, it needs to be sprayed. That's what it needs to be. But uh, since Evelyn doesn't believe in spraying, uh, I worked with what I had and I did with what I could. So there it is. Thank you. Thank you, Bert, for the update. I also wanted to say uh, we ordered our seed through Northern Wildflowers, which is a company in Canada, and they provided us with native pollinator seed. And because we ordered a bulk order, they offered us a 30% discount on the seed. So we are under budget for the project. 
So based on Evelyn's request for sand to help with the spreading of the seed, I think we can accommodate that in the budget and there may be some extra money there for signs and other, other things, but we should review that um, before the September meeting. Read up. Just a question, is there an opportunity to reimburse Bert for uh, the fuel that he's used. Obviously, he's uh, gone over that area um, quite a bit. And yes, fuel is very expensive. He's doing it on his own time. And I think he deserves to be at least reimbursed for the fuel. Just a question. I think if the uh, committee was to pass a motion today that we um, look at somewhere in the budget to be able to reimburse, whether it's a pollinator garden or a budget, um, to reimburse uh, Bert for the fuel, then I would uh, look at that and make that happen. Thank you, Darcy. I think that's a great idea. If somebody's willing to do all the work, least we can do is, is help with the other money out of hand. Hard enough to get volunteers to do anything, as we all know. Um, it's maybe just asking a little bit much, but the price of the fuel and everything. So I think that's a great idea, Darcy. Thank you. He had also had fuel involved <clears throat> picking up with our trailer, picking everything up for the cleanup day. So there, there are a lot of extra costs that volunteers just take on themselves. Did you want to submit a bill? So just in conversation, maybe Labita can help me with this, is we should put a motion on the table so, so that we have the motion to uh, take the money out of the budget. Um, I would probably say the motion is to maybe we leave it a little more vague as that we uh, that we, uh, the motion is to take money out of the environment parks or environment uh, trails committee's budget to reimburse the volunteers for their expenses, um, i.e. fuel. Um, and then if, if Patty has some expenses and Bert, we can look at that and um, get those reimbursed. Um, if I don't know if we wanna do a maximum amount or Lubica can maybe give us a little bit more direction on what she needs for that. I'll make a I'll make a motion that Darcy just said for and to, to discuss I guess whatever costs as things go along. I don't know whatever you think, Darcy. Do we have a seconder? Rita, all in favor? It's a go. Uh, I understand what Labitz is trying to say. If, if, uh, 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 yeah. Oh, well, that's not much. That is, ex <laughs> that is very generous. <laughs> that's generous. <laughs> and Patty, you would approximately the same, just a, a guesstimation would 50 be all right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Darcy? I think if the the, the committee and Labitz is comfortable with, I can look after getting what we need to get and get the money to both Patty and, and uh, Bert. Thank you, Darcy. And again, I'm sure with the volunteers, once again, anything will be gratefully accepted. Yes. 
Bert, did you have a comment? No, okay, sorry. I just saw you kind of getting, getting up there. <laughs> okay. Any uh, more discussion on pollinator metal or the cleanup? If not, any correspondence? Nothing at this time. Any announcements? Seeing none. Oh, I'm sorry, Bert. I was going to announce that I was going to run for mayor, but I changed my mind. <laughs> oh. Patty? That's something, but I'm not sure if it would be a new business. The Stratford Rotary Club have uh, started a program. They're collecting uh, masks and PPE, which we were talking about before. And they, they have to be clean, but they're collecting them from doctor's offices and dentist's offices and the hospitals and, and the general public. And these, apparently these can be recycled. So I've been, I talked a bit to the head, the president of Rotary Club in Stratford, and they were talking about doing a, pre, a presentation to the Rotary Club here. So right now that's all the information I have about it. You have like, you have the nursing homes and so on to collect from, but you also have um, a couple sites in town where people can put theirs, you know, a couple of, like maybe the drugstore, the arena, or, and then once a week, I think they pick them up. I'm not sure how the whole process works, but it's um, an idea. Uh, so are, are you talking like just the face shields or you're not talking the mask, are you? You're kidding. They can clean them. Oh, really? Oh, see, I keep learning things here. I didn't know that was possible. Bert. I find it, uh, and I questioned it when it was brought up at our Rotary Club too, but uh, because I cut a fair bit of lawn and I find it quite a few masks, I, I asked the question, you know, there's a lot of masks laying along the road. Uh, are you interested? And they said, no, definitely not. Uh, I, I, they have to be clean. Well, this one isn't even clean anymore because I've breathed into it uh, four or five times that I've worn it. So I'm kind of misunderstanding how this program is gonna work. Uh, it, it costs practically nothing to make these things. I'm not sure why they would recycle them. That's my two cents towards the recycling of masks, so. It's land, it just goes into landfill then. So I think they're trying to save it from going into landfill and recycling it into something useful. I mean, you would need the presentation from the Stratford Rotary Club who are, who are doing it because we have so many questions about it, right? And we don't know that he should have the answers. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's a, I didn't even know that was a thing or it could be a thing. Because all the way along we kept, we're told, you know, only use a little bit and you had to get rid of it. And, you know, hey, I'm, we're still learning. <laughs> thank you very much for that, Patty. More information. Alrighty, so that was announcements. Um, Notice of motion. Is there anything there that somebody wants to say? Bert. I say uh, I'll make a comment on the next meeting on September the 21st. Uh, my lover and I are going to head for France on the 
12th of September and we won't be home till the 23rd or 24th. So I won't be at that meeting. Is that an announcement? <laughs> yes, it is. So is there, um, let me, do you think we can alter that or, or what, excuse me, how does it, um, everyone feel about that? Do we want to change the date? You wouldn't be here either, Patty? Well, there's two. We're dwindling quickly here. So maybe we should uh, reschedule. No. No, no, okay. That's fine. Okay. You're going on it. <laughs> we might have to zoom you. <laughs> Yes. You going back on Zoom? <laughs> Just don't have such a late night. <laughs> that date seems to work then for most of us. Yes. You're okay, Patty, with that? We're okay then? Okay. Okay, on that. And then again, which means the next meeting we had said once again. Will be just postponed for one week later. Is there any other business that would like to be brought up at this time? Yes. Okay, so this is where we're going to talk about budget proposals for next year. So Throughout COVID and the past few years, we've, as this committee, we've been a little bit lax about um, submitting a detailed budget for programs. We have a lot of really great ideas, but sometimes those aren't backed up with a lot of um, details when we bring things to the committee. Um, so in talking with Jeff and in just trying to move forward in a proper manner as a municipal committee, um, we would like to make sure that projects that we would like to undertake for 2023 are brought up and well researched for the September 28th meeting. So if you are wanting to submit a, a program or project, uh, a special event, we would like you to submit your budget proposal and your project proposal um, in September. The municipality's funding works on a calendar year. So that way we can uh, if we have all the projects and all the special events and the budgets that are required, we can more appropriately um, determine how much money to ask council for, for our committee's projects. So um, for example, if you guys remember Evelyn's presentation for the pollinator garden, she did a whole PowerPoint presentation for us online. She broke down the items. So how much seed would be, how much um, other items that she'd need like signs and approximate value of those. Um, so I'm not saying that we all need to do PowerPoint presentations when we submit um, a project proposal, but we need to have um, a very good handle of the, the budget items for each event. So let's say I wanted to do um, a tree sale. I would want to have a specific number. I'd talk to the conservation authority about how much each tree would cost us, how much we would sell the trees for, how, where the money would go that we would gain or lose from the, the tree sale. And then any money that would we would require for administration, advertising and newspapers, we would want all those line items documented clearly so that we can um, approve these projects with the, the best available information that we can possibly have. Um, this way of um, proposing projects and budgets is very common among NGOs, other government organizations, other committees, um, and even community groups. So this is the way that we want to proceed. Um, if you guys have questions about how to write up a budget proposal, it can be as simple as just line items, right? Like 
labor, this much fuel, this much um, advertising, this much. Uh, and I'm more than happy to work with you on those types of items. Um, as well, if we are undertaking projects that are larger, like the stairs or like tree planting programs or like cleanups, and we need um, help within our committee, I definitely encourage us to reach out to members of the committee and say, hey, just a reminder, this event is happening. Um, I would love to have help with the um, news taking of the event. Is anyone willing to help? Because our committee only meets every four months. So sometimes these events come up and it's been so long since our last meeting. It's nice to keep things top of mind. And I know some of you communicate amongst yourselves in your personal lives, but it's nice as a committee that we reach out to, to everyone on the committee and offer up um, opportunities to partake, to help, to enjoy um, the process. So I'm willing to take any questions on that if anyone has any at this time. But otherwise, uh, we're hoping that all the projects we want to undertake for 2023 are brought up at the September meeting. Bert. Can we not make some kind of an agreement with the Drummond boys uh, because they sell trees and everything that uh, we would uh, like that's what we used to do is we used to sell our trees through John Drummond uh, out in the farm. And now the Drummond boys are across the road from where wards used to be. Can we not uh, have some kind of a program with those boys? Um, like I said, I'm no longer a member on this committee, so I won't be undertaking any more projects. Uh, so if that's something that other people would like to take on, I'm more than happy to discuss that with you guys. Personally, like I've worked and done tree planting for CAs for so much of my life that it's just commonplace for me to, to go to CAs and support their tree planting programs. But if there's other people um, in our community that can supply trees at a similar cost, then we should definitely entertain that idea. He has quite a, a proposal on Facebook, uh, the Drummond Boys, uh... With, with their trees and uh, trees and trees and trees and different kinds of trees. So I, I just brought that up because we used to do it through John Drummond all the time. And they're young and they're local. Thank you. Any other uh, comments or anything? Great information here I'm learning. Okay, I think just to recap, basically, if we want any monies, we have to put it on paper, we have to show approximately what it is, what it's for, itemize it, and then we put it forwards, and that is how we get monies. So it's pretty straightforward. If you want it, write her down. Okay, then. Um, thank you very much. Is there any other? Bert? <laughs> God, you're rolling, you're ahead of me, but yeah. Do we have a seconder? Rita. <laughs> okay then, all in favor? We're adjourned. <laughs>